All right. Perfect timing, you guys. Perfect timing. So how's everybody doing? Good. You guys excited to be here? Amen. It's the best night of the week. Friday night at Celebrate Recovery. Love it. Well, tonight, you guys, we are... Uh, my name is Kevin, grateful believer in Jesus Christ, who struggled with drug addiction and codependency. Um, I'm doing pretty good, you guys. Happy to say. Got some years under my belt. In December, it'll be 11 years. Yeah. Man, God rescued me. Some of you guys know my story, right? But he's doing the same thing for you, too. Listen, just keep your eyes and ears open. Amen. So we are on lesson 19 tonight, you guys. We are moving right along. And the title of our lesson is Crossroads, right? It's, uh, we have come to a crossroad in our recovery. We have come to a new junction in our recovery, right? And within this junction, there are some things that we need to continue to do, right? And that's key word is continue, right? And one of those things is we need to uh, keep spending time, keep spending intimate time with God. Amen. Everybody agree on that? Yes. Far, first and foremost, we need to keep spending time with God. Um, another thing that we need to do in this junction, you guys, is we need to keep doing our inventory, our daily inventory. Right. And what that is, is self-examination. You guys have been here for a while. You probably know a little bit about that. But we need to do a daily inventory, right? And then um, one of the things that's really important for us in recovery, we need to keep admitting when we're wrong, right? I want you guys to listen to me, right? And only when we're wrong. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but um, that is key for us in recovery is to stay uh, humble, stay pliable, right? So God can keep using us. That's one of the things the devil loves. He wants us to harden our hearts, right? So we're not listening to the word. We're not listening to those signs. And the next thing you know, we're somewhere we don't want to be, right? But, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But before we get into that, you guys, um, I want to talk a little bit about our past and a little bit about our future, right? Our past, right? We uh, face denial. Right? Hopefully, that's number one. Right? We face some denial. Right? We've turned our lives over to Christ. Huge. I'm talking about some huge stuff here. Right? And um, another thing we've made here to celebrate recovery, which is a good thing. And uh, what about our future? Right? Question. How many people know that God can turn our mess into his message. Yes. All right. How many people know that no matter what has happened in their life, right? God can use it for his purpose. Yes. All right. We're all in agreement. Now, this is a big one, right? How many people know that it's actually happening right now? A couple of people, right? You see, I believe that my life, I believe that your life, right, is being used for God's purpose. And that purpose is to show people that God is real. OK, I know you guys are going to start jumping on board now. Right. To show that God is real, that God is a forgiving God. Right. That God will never leave you nor forsake you. Right. It has to be. I mean, you're sitting here today, right? Let me give you an example. I'll use myself. I used to be in prison. I used to be on drugs. Um, I was running the streets, right? You name it, I probably was involved with it. But um, with God's purpose in my life, I'm not on drugs, thank God, right? Not on drugs. Um, not in prison, right? And happily married. And I'm a ministry leader for an amazing place like this, right? I'm a witness. God is using 
my mess for his message. And if you guys really think about it, he's doing the same thing with you. I want you to think about that for a minute. Cam, do me a favor. Put uh, principle seven on the screen for me. So I want you guys to just read along with me. Yeah, principle seven. All right, great. All right, principle seven reads, reserve a daily time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer to know God and his will for my life and to gain the power to help me uh, to follow his will, right? And the connecting scripture for that, you guys, is in uh, it's Matthew 5, 8, right? And it says, happy are the peacemaker, Right. And then for this lesson 19, they're incorporating step 10 and step step 10 says we continue to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, we promptly admitted it. All right. And then the connecting scripture for that is in First uh, Corinthians 10, 12. And it says, so if you think that you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. A crossroad is an intersection of two or more roads. But the crossroad that I am speaking about is a place that we come in our recovery. This is a place where we can sometimes get a little relaxed and comfortable. A lot of you guys know that I'm in construction, right? And one of the Worst things that can happen to an individual in construction is complacency, right? He or she gets relaxed, they get comfortable, basically not keeping their eyes on the pit holes and the stop signs and the yield signs. And before you know it, they are in an unsafe situation, right? Sounds a lot like our recovery sometimes, right? We're not watching for the pit holes and the barricades, right? Stop signs. And before you know it, our recovery is in an unsafe situation. So this crossroad that we're in right now is not a place where we stop and get comfortable, you guys. It's a place where we keep heading on, right? And I know we've, we've done some good things up to this far. We're on lesson 19, right? So that means we have... Um, admitted that we're powerless, right? We've done some things, right? We, uh, we have hope, right? Our sanity is coming back, hopefully, right? How many people's sanity is coming back? Good. I lost mine for a while, <laughs> right? We're in action mode, right? A lot of us are doing things right now, getting to that next step. Um, hopefully you have a sponsor, right? We're starting to get our morals in check, right? This is a place where we keep on going in our recovery, you guys, where we check the pit holes and the barricades, just like in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, we just read it. It says, so if you think that you're standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. The devil likes to catch us slipping, right? As I would say, we need to continue to do a checkup from the neck up, right? This crossroad continuously requires us to take an honest look at our life, listing, confessing, and sharing all the wrongdoings. We must stay humble, right? Everyone say humble. humble. Amen. Humble enough to allow God to continue to make major changes in us, staying willing to forgive and making amends to offer our forgiveness to, the, to those that we have hurt and forgiveness to those that we have hurt that we have, that have hurt us, right? And that was a hard one, right? Not long ago, most of us would have said that this is an impossible journey, right? And we would have never, we have never been able to change or grow this far. And we would be right, right? We could have never have made it through on our own power, right? In fact, the only reason why we made it this far is because we decided back in principle three 
to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. Jesus explains it in this way in John 8, 32. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Then in John 14, 6, he defines truth by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes, um, comes to the Father except through me, right? We have been set free from our addictions and our obsessive compulsive behavior, behaviors because of the truth. We have asked into our hearts Jesus Christ because of this life changing decision that we have made. Jesus has come in and we built the foundation of our life, you guys. We will undoubtedly see major changes if you haven't already. How many people have seen changes in their life? Right? Let me hear a couple of them. I love putting people on the spot. Let me hear a couple of them. What kind of changes? What do you got? All right. All right, so you're looking for it. Right? These are clear. All right, anybody else? What's that? Feeling free in a humble way, right? This is the change. What do you got, buddy? Things that have changed? Yeah. I couldn't stay out of the house. Until now. I Amen. I Amen. You guys, Lamentations 340 exhorts us to, to, yeah, e oh. Uh, change my addiction ways. You change your what? My uh, addiction. I mean, the way I. You know, right. Amen. I've been sober for seven months, so I try to do things in my. Amen. There you go. So God is real, right? And don't leave before the magic happens, as, as they would say, right? A lot of times we want to do things, we want things to happen on our timing, right? And that's one of the things that kicks us out of the game, right? We have to wait on God. Keep praying, keep being humble, listening to your loved ones. Amen. Lamentations 3.40 exhorts us to examine our ways and test them and then return to the Lord, right? We need to ask ourselves questions like this through the examination, right? What did I do, uh, what did I do good today, right? These are some questions, right? In what area did I blow it, right? This is part of your examination. Did I do or say anything that hurt anyone today, Right? Do I owe anyone amends, right? What did I learn from my actions today? This is the type of questions that we need to ask ourselves, right? Because when we ask ourselves these questions, things come to the light. We know the devil likes what's in the dark, right? Have you ever been in the dark for a period of time and you look up and you're just like, how did I get here, right? This self-examination keeps you from getting there. Right. Find somebody you can talk to like my wife. You got to give her a round of applause. because I'm always talking, you know, from morning to night. But I but we all need that person you can talk to. And if not, that's where your sponsors and your accountabilities come in. Right. A lot of things are just running around our head. But until they come out our mouths, they won't it won't be clear to us. All right, you guys, so there's the acrostics on the table there. We're going to start going through those. All right. And um, it is the word 10, right? And the T stands for take time to do a daily inventory, right? Because remember, we're at a crossroad in our recovery, you guys, and this is where we have to continue on this healthy journey. Right. We're not looking back. The T stands for take time to do a daily inventory. The E stands for evaluate the good and the bad. 
right? T is take time to do a daily inventory. E is to evaluate the good and the bad. And then the N stands for need to admit our wrongs promptly. Promptly. All right, principle seven reminds us to reserve time with God for self-examination, Bible reading, and prayer. This gives us quiet time to count the good and bad things we did during a particular period, right? And then within that period, we go through the questions that we talked about, right? What good did I do today, right? I owe anybody amends. This is that time. All right. The E in our cross stands for what? Evaluate. Evaluate. Thank you. Evaluate the good and bad. The E forces me to see that I am going to be wrong. <laughs> and I'm going to make mistakes. Right. John 1, 8 through 10 says, if we say we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he can be depended on to forgive us and cleanse us from our wrong, from every wrong. If we claim we have not sinned, we are lying and calling God a liar. For he says we have sinned. And John 3.21 tells us whoever lives by the truth comes into the light. The end is for need, right? Need to admit our wrongs promptly, right? And this is a story from the writer. He says, for years, I couldn't admit when I was wrong. My wife could vouch for that. I couldn't admit my mistakes. My refusal to offer amends blocked all my relationships, especially with my family. As I grew and matured in the word and in my recovery, I discovered that I had to own my mistakes and take responsibility of my actions. I couldn't do that if I did not take time, a daily time, to allow God to show me where I missed the mark. And then it goes on to say, it's easier for me to admit the mistakes I made 10 years ago than the mistakes I made today, right? We all know that's to be true, right? But this lesson teaches me as soon as I realize that I blew it, I need to promptly admit it. You guys see the value in that? Yeah. Right? That's part of that healthy relationship. They say, do not go to sleep on your anger and things of that nature. That is such a key thing for our recovery, right, is, is being pliable and being honest, right? And I know that we have a lot of fears, we have a lot of doubts, a lot of us have been places and done things that, that most people haven't been or done, you know, or, or, or experienced. It could have been a bad situation, right? But we can't let our fears, right? We can't let our fears keep us from having that healthy relationship. Right. I've been wrong with my wife only like once. No, <laughs> no. but I would tell her I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I made a mistake. Right. And it ain't easy. Right. It ain't easy, you guys. But it, I guarantee you it's key to our recovery. Right. Matthew 5, 23 and 24 tells us, this is how I want you to conduct yourselves in these manners. If you enter your place of worship and about to make an offering, you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you, abandon your offering, leave immediately, go to this friend and make things right. Then and only then come back and work things out with God. Right? I got a story I'm going to tell you. I was kind of reluctant to tell you this because I'm a little embarrassed. I told my wife earlier, but I think it has something. I think God allowed this to happen to me today because of this lesson. So listen up, right? You guys know I'm in construction, right? And we talked about the, the barricades and the yield signs and things of that nature. One other thing inside of construction is housekeeping, 
right? Like you got to keep things out the way so when you're walking, you don't trip. You got to clean up a lot, right? So today, I am doing some cleaning up. So I'm, it's, there's wood, right? And I'm restacking it. And I restack this wood and this bee comes out, right? And it lands on me. And I'm like, and then it landed on me again. And I'm like, and then it landed on me again. We were in a full battle then, right? <laughs> you, have you ever seen someone like, they're running down the street, right? Because they got bees, right? So I am like literally fighting this bee and he's, and he's, and, and I'm like, God, he's going to win because I'm getting tired, literally getting tired. And I'm fighting this bee and he's like, he's dodging me and stuff. And I'm just like, and all the, my, my employees are like looking at me. They're like, they're like, what's going on? And, and literally I finally got this bee and I hit him and he landed on the ground. I was like, oh my God. You know what I mean? I was, um, I was a little scared. I was a little embarrassed. There was a lot of stuff going on, but it reminded me of this lesson, you guys, because in construction, in our recovery, we need to check for the different things, right? And we need to clean up. How I many, you know, when, you, when, you, when you're getting clean, you need to clean up stuff, right? And every time that we get to really clean up something, that's when the devil tries to attack you, right? And he's got you swinging, he got you roughing up, and and that's why it remind me of the story, you guys. It remind me of just how I'm cleaning up and the devil's, and the devil's got me fighting them. And, but what we use, right, is that we use the uh, spiritual battle, right? We use the, the truth, the belt, the belt of truth, right? And, and we use the breastplate of righteousness, right? Don't, don't go swinging at the devil, right? Don't do that. But um, it just reminded me, guys. So we have to... For number one, inside of this crossroad, we need to make sure that we don't get complacent, right? Don't get complacent. We need to check for our pit holes. We need to clean up. And when you're cleaning up and the devil attacks you, just keep on going because you're going to win. I won, right? I won. Just keep on going, right? Use, use God's um, armor, right? Um, we got to make sure we make amends when we're wrong, right? And then as principle four says, we need to make sure that when we're doing our daily inventory that we keep things balanced. Very important. You know, don't get too, too much on the bad things and not see the good things you did that day. Right. Because that's when the devil will try to attack you. So you want to keep things balanced. All right. That's it. All right. Um, Sharon, will you do our principles? Thank you, guys.